Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and in prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let's pray. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and so set us aflame with the fire of your love that with pure hearts and kindled affections we may attain to the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpets shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, bright with a glorious splendor, for darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and good, always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who paid for us the debt of Adam's sin and by his blood delivered your faithful people, for he is the true Paschal Lamb the very Lamb of God, whose blood marks the doorposts of believers and makes us holy. This is the night when you brought our forebears, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when the pillar of fire you banished the darkness of our iniquity. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of light. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. How wonderful and beyond our knowing, O oh God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us, that to redeem a slave, you gave a son. O oh, wonderful providence of Adam's sin, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. Oh, happy fault, which gained for us so great and glorious a Redeemer. This is the night of which it is written. The night shall be as bright as the day. How holy is this night, when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen. And joy to those who mourn. It casts out pride and hatred. It brings peace and concord. How blessed is this night, when earth and heaven are joined, and, and man, man is, is reconciled, reconciled to, God. to God. Therefore, O Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, the gift of your most holy church. May it mingle with the lights of heaven and shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star, who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives light to all creation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now I want to welcome you to this Easter Vigil 2021 and invite you to join us in the worship of Jesus, the King who died and rose again for you and for me and for the whole world. And now let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, remembering how he saved his people in ages past and in the fullness of time sent his son to be our redeemer. And let us pray that God may bring to completion in each of us the saving work that he has begun. Let there be light as I begin this day to draw me from the darkness and the night to bless my flesh to clear and show my way. Let there be light. Strong in the depth and shining from the height Evening and morning's interplay, blessing and enabling my sight. Lighten my soul and teach me how to pray. Lighten my mind and teach me wrong from right in all I do and think and see and say. Let there be light. 
the firmament, the vast curve of the sky, the breath and weave of every moment unending blue wherein we long to fly the firmament. Your love has pitched the heavens like a tent and delved the depth where hidden treasures lie from whose rich womb our life has its ascent. Out of those depths I hear my spirit cry as height and depth give praise with one ascent to that great form that orders low and high the firmament. The earth will yield her still unfolding seed, and barley sheaves grow golden in the field, the vineyard and the fruit trees, all we need the earth will yield. A soft wind sends the summer through the weald, in valley folds the sheep and cattle feed, The shoreline shines, your wonders are revealed. The waters are unbound, the ocean freed to thunder praise in whose depths are concealed your mysteries. Your praise in word and deed the earth will yield. Lights in the night, the lucid moon and sun, the lesser and the greater share your light and lift my heart to you when day is done lights in the night and lonely souls are gladdened by the sight for those who dwell in darkness hope is born the scattered stars still tingle with delight treading the dance the seasons in their turn salute the lights of heaven in their flight in our dark hearts your praises shine and burn lights in the night with open wings a seagull skims the spray Sounding the depth below, a great wail sings. Your spirit moves amongst them as they play with open wings. Now open me to all your spirit brings. Move in me too as I begin to pray that love may ripple out in shining rings. Speak to my soul through all you made this day, through all that swims and flies and swoops and swings and let your spirit lift the words I say with open wings. You made us new and beautiful today. Your spirit softened us like morning dew, your image shining from us through the clay you made us new. You woke us and we knew ourselves in you. We walked together at the close of day. You trusted us and called us to be true. When we forsook your love and turned away, you came and sought us where we hid from you. And on the cross, in darkness, on this day, you made us new. Blessing and rest, delight in everything, Sustained by your strong love and richly blessed, this is the gift you give, the day you bring blessing and rest. This is indeed the gladness of the best, from first lines in the east where linnets sing to where the last light lingers in the west. You lift the cares to which I used to cling as you yourself descend to be my guest and show me how to find in everything blessing and rest.
O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, <laughs> You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I, I will, will put, put enmity, enmity between, between you and, and the woman, woman, and between your offspring and, and her, her offspring. offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall, and bruise, you his shall heel. bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In, in pain, pain you shall bring forth children. children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and, and he, he shall rule, rule over you. And, and to, to Adam, Adam he said, said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you, you shall, shall not, not eat of it. it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In, in pain, pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns, thorns and, and thistles, thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By, By the, the sweat, sweat of, of your, your face you shall eat bread, bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For you, you are, are dust, and to dust, and to you, dust shall you shall return. Let us pray. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. From all unrighteousness, from pride, vanity, and hypocrisy, 
from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all evil desires. Good Lord, deliver us from laziness, worldliness, and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws. Good Lord, deliver us from ungodly attitudes, actions, or words that demean and devalue other image bearers because of ethnicity or race. Good Lord, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death, and at the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, and by your preaching of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. Hear our prayers, O Lord, our God. Hear us, good Lord. Govern and direct your holy church, fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is your will. Hear us, good Lord. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all the nations. Hear us, Good Lord, enlighten our bishops and all who minister with knowledge and understanding, that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Hear us, good Lord. Give your people grace to hear and receive your word and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Hear us, good Lord. Grant us courage and imagination to listen with humble hearts, to speak the truth in love, and to work toward justice and reconciliation. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen those who stand Comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, good Lord. Guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of justice and peace. Hear us, good Lord. Guard and strengthen our president that he may put his trust in you and seek your honor and glory. Hear us, good Lord. Bless those who administer the law that they may uphold justice, honesty, 
and truth. Hear us, good Lord. Help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Lord, have mercy. Heal the sick in body and mind, and provide for the homeless, the hungry, the destitute. Lord, have mercy. Show your pity on prisoners and refugees, and all who are in trouble. Lord, have mercy. Forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Lord, have mercy. We give thanks for those who have died in the peace of Christ. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, you sent your blessed Son, the seed of the woman, that he might crush the serpent's head and make all creation new. Grant that, having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, they said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, 
his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night, without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord and the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them and against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered their chariots and their horsemen. Of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus, the Lord saved the people of Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians so the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. For I am a 
whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day. By the power of your mighty arm, you once delivered your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation offered to all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. But I will leave in your midst a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord. Those who are left in Israel, they shall do no injustice and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouth a deceitful tongue, for they shall graze and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, Shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, 
a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors and I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you in. At that time, when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world know and see that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and all things are being brought to their perfection. By him, through him, all things were made. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Christo vive. Hallelujah. Christo resuscitou. Christo vive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen.
The Lord be with you. Let's pray. O God, you made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It is a joy tonight to be sharing with you a message for Easter Vision. I'm so honored and pleased to have this opportunity. My name is Roram Banda. I'm the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Rwanda, more so the Bishop of Gasabo. Diocese. It is a privilege to be serving my Lord in this capacity at this time. So before we go too far, let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, evening. Thank you for what you have done in our lives. Thank you for what Mr. Visual tells us and means to us. I pray that through your Holy Spirit, you will open our hearts and our ears to hear and to receive what we have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight I'm sharing with you from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 1 to 11. Book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 1 to 11. I would like to read those words so that we can go together and that we understand them together. The heading of the chapter says, Dead to sin, alive in Christ. What shall we say then? That is Paul asking a question. But he also answers it. But he has a series of questions. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who, die, who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, 
that should no longer be slaves to sin, because in one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. This is a day. This is the evening. Jesus' body lay in its tomb, guarded by a Roman soldier. When the Sabbath ended at around 6 p.m., Christ's body was ceremonially treated for burial with spices by Nicodemus, and he had purchased some ointments of 75 pounds of perfume. Nicodemus and Joseph of Amartya had come to realize that Jesus was actually the long-awaited Messiah. These two cared for the body, for the burial. In Matthew 27, verses 62 to 66, we see a guard at the tomb. We see a guard at the tomb. The chief priests and the Pharisees were encouraging Pilate to make sure that the tomb was heavily guarded for the fear that the words that Jesus had predicted, that he will be he will raise, he will, he will raise, he will be raised on the third day. They were afraid that that would be true, that the disciples will come and steal him away. They were afraid that the disciples will steal the body and tell people he had risen from the dead as he had said. These guys went and sealed the tomb and sealed with a stone and set a guard to the tomb. This is an evening between death and life for those who understand the story. It is a difficult evening. It is time of grieving. This is the night for us who know the story that death becomes life. Paul draws our attention to baptism, an act of obedience for believers, an act that should be preceded by repentance, repentance of our sins. A moment that symbolizes a rebirth, a union with Christ. A time when Christians enter into water of baptism, or whether it is by immersion, or whether it is sprinkled, we are proclaiming the gospel message when we are baptized. Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and lives again. In verse 4 of chapter 6, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. We were dead to the power of sin. It is interesting to note that this evening is crucial as we think that tomorrow there will be another life, a life in Jesus. But this dying with him and rising with him is more of a participatory where Christians share in Christ's death and resurrection, as we can see it in verse 4 to 5. 
Baptism, therefore, my brothers and sisters, for those who believe, is a visible demonstration of believers. Death, barrier, and resurrection with our Jesus Christ. We also share the blessing of his resurrection, which is a new life. Remember that the heading of this word was saying, dead to sin, alive to God. We are under a new leadership for those who have accepted him. We are under a new manager of our lives. The scripture in 2 Corinthians 5 to 17, it says that the old man is gone for those who accepted Jesus and the new man has come. So there is an old management in a sense, which is a management of sin. And there is a new management, which is a management of by Christ. New power to life. A new way. Jesus is true life. He came so that we can have life. So death and resurrection frees us from the slavery to sin. It allows us to walk in a newness of life. It gives us new values. It gives us a new identity. It gives us a new mindset. For we are in Jesus who died on the cross, who was buried, and who resurrected for us to have a victory over sin and therefore a new life. With Christ's crucifixion, with Christ crucified, it simply means that Christ paid the penalty of our sin. He provided the power that we need to overcome sin on a daily basis. Because of his death, because of his burial, because of his resurrection, sin is powerless. Sin is ineffective. As I said, 1 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us of an old self and a new man. Power of sin has been broken because of the crucifixion because of Christ crucified and for those who believe. And so tonight, as we look forward to tomorrow, when Christ is risen, it is a very meaningful evening for those who believe because we know what is happening tomorrow. It is also a beautiful story for us. Because we know that this time, as believers, it is a difficult time. It is a sad time. But it is also a time where we have hope. We have something to look forward to. And for those who are not believers, for those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, this is a proclamation of the gospel of Jesus that he came, that he died for our sins, that he was crucified, that he suffered for you and me, that he was buried, and on the third day he rose. That resurrection is what gives us victory. That resurrection is what gives us power. That resurrection is what brings a meaning. Can you imagine if he had not been resurrected? And so tonight, some of you are baptizing. Others are praying. Let me invite you. That if you have not accepted Christ in your life as a personal Savior, that you do it. 
knowing that he died for you, knowing that he was put on the cross for your sins, knowing that he paid the price for you, and that he resurrected, and that that it gives you, if you accept Jesus Christ, it gives you a new identity, it gives you a new life, it gives you new values, it, it puts you in the family of believers. And for those who have accepted Jesus Christ, who are listening to me tonight, where you are seated, whether you are in a congregation, in a church this evening, or whether you are home, it is time to rejoice. It is time for joy because you know what is happening tomorrow. It is also time to celebrate in a way because you celebrate what you know is happening. That his crucifixion is actually what paid your, for your sins. It is what gives you the power you need through the Holy Spirit to live a day-to-day -day life, knowing that you are not slave to sin, knowing that you are not under the power of sin. Sin is powerless. And so I encourage you, brothers and sisters, to draw closer to him, to put him into your life and let him live your life, to call sin sin, but knowing that by the grace of God you have been saved. And so tonight, think about that. Think about his death. Think about his burial because of you and me. Think about the love of God that he manifested for you and me. And look forward to tomorrow where we celebrate and shout, He is risen! And that is, I am an amazing story that is significant to you and me. That is a victory that you and I as believers should celebrate. This is also another reason why we should never be ashamed to preach and teach about Jesus, the one who came, the one who died for our sins. The one who paid the price. The one who rose again. The one we are waiting for his return. May he found us ready for his kingdom. For him to take us home. May we take this news of his death, of his crucifixion, of his burial, and tomorrow of his resurrection to those who have never heard, so heard, so that they may come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you as you draw closer to him. May the Lord bless you as you meditate tonight about his death, about his burial. May the Lord bless you as we wait for tomorrow to shout with fathers, he is risen. Let us pray. Our gracious Father, <laughs> you are a loving God who has loved us and demonstrated it and manifested it. You are a loving God who cared enough to pay for our sins by giving your son Jesus Christ on the cross and died buried, and rose again, and rendered sin ineffective and powerless. May your grace abound. May your Holy Spirit take this message and bring it to our hearts and minds to meditate on as tomorrow we celebrate Easter. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Archbishop Mumbanda. Boy, one of the great gifts 
for the three churches that are stitching together this vigil is the, the heritage we receive from the Church of Rwanda. You know, we were birthed from that church and they continue to provide prayer, guidance, and love to us. And we are so thankful for them and to, that they could be a part of this vigil is a huge gift. We turn to the part of our service now where we look to respond to the sermon. And we do that by renewing our uh, baptismal vows. So would you join me as we say our vows again together? In baptism, we are buried with Christ in his death and raised with him in newness of life. We are set free in the spirit to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. As God's children who he has raised to life, I ask you to renew the promises and vows of your baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve Christ faithfully in his body, the church. Now, would you join me by standing as we say these vows together? Do you renounce the devil and all his works, the vain pomp and glory of the world, and the sinful desires of the flesh, so that you will not follow nor be led by them? I renounce them all. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. But on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the hand of the Father. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and deed the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind? And will you seek to love your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, granting us the forgiveness of sins, Keep us in eternal life by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you, I'd encourage you to extend peace to those you're watching this service with, or to text or email friends in the church to say peace of the Lord to them. We come now to finish our worship with our last song. This is an Alleluia song as we sing praise to God and give thanks for the joy we have found as he has died for us, risen for us, and invited us to be a part of his people. Would you join me as we sing together?
Thanks so much for joining us for this service of Easter Vigil we've been able to share together. God bless you and have a happy Easter. Now receive the benediction. All our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works we send to the cross of Christ. And all our hopes we set on the risen Christ. Christ, the Son of righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this week and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.